Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Allison from the Little Paper Crown blog, and today I wanted to share with you my final thoughts on the Rod and Staff ABC series. Now, I did a full inside peek of each page of both sets of these books, the A through F and the G through L of the ABC series, on my channel. So I won't go through each book again. However, I wanted to point out a few things in these particular books that really stood out to me as being something different that I had not seen in a lot of pre-K, preschool, and kindergarten curriculums, especially the trendy ones that are kind of floating around right now. First of all, it, they're very inexpensive. If you were to buy the whole set of both the preschool and the kindergarten set on milestonebooks.com, I think it's like $48. So that's 24 for preschool, 24 for kindergarten, and you're done. And you could do all this, read aloud, and have to do nothing else. It's very comprehensive, but it's still very simple. That was another thing that I loved about it. The simple black and white pictures. Finn, for some reason, and I both do better with a black and white aesthetic when things are just really simple like this or like that. And then we can add the color if we want. But um, for some reason, black and white is just something that appeals to us. So that's something that appeals to you if that's your aesthetic. These are very sweet drawings and they're all in black and white. So nothing distracting if you have a child that's maybe distracted by too much color or too much color, too much busyness is very um, detracting from what you're trying to study. These would be a good option for you. Um, another thing that I really liked that I don't see anywhere except maybe like in Ranger Rick magazine or Highlight magazine, Highlights magazine, are these picture stories and these picture stories happen to be Bible related so you could do a whole little lesson for the day that went around your Bible story for the day let's say you're reading Daniel in the lion's den um, in your daily Bible study with your kids anyway they could help you read this story and then there was some matching that we did and then some counting that we did related to Daniel in the lion's den so that was something unusual that I do not see in a lot of early preschool and kindergarten curriculums. Another thing that I saw um, or that I liked was in the counting by numbers, which is the third one in the ABC series. This is very math related. So it's all numbers and um, counting and looking at objects and seeing how much there are. But the thing that we really loved were these little number poems. So it tells you how to write the number four. Down and over, then down some more. This is how to make a four. We say those poems anytime we cannot remember a number. The kids do, I should say. I know my numbers, <laughs> thank goodness. But <laughs> um, here's some matching, cutting out and matching. Here's another example. Curving down into a loop, number six can roll a hoop. So anytime they look at the number six, and especially Lydia, if she can't tell me what it is, if she doesn't recognize it right away, I'll say that little poem and I'll leave out the word six and she knows right away what number it is. So that, that was some key things in this particular book that stood out to me as far as um, helping kids with numbers. Um, there's a Bible reader that comes with this. It was fantastic. I've already passed that along to my sister-in-law to use with her kids because my kids are a little too old for it now, but her kids love it. And then um, it goes from Adventures with Books, the Bible reader, Counting with Numbers, there's a book called Doing It Carefully, Everywhere We Go, and Finding the Answers. And the two that you don't see here are because when we were done with them, we just recycled them. There was a few things I wanted to keep sake in here for Finn um, that he did when he was smaller than he is now. <laughs> and I thought they were sweet and I wanted to keep them as keepsake. But the other books we were done with, we just recycled. Okay, so this is the preschool set. If you wanted to buy this by itself with the Bible reader, it'd be 24 And then on milestonebooks.com. I found a lot of these at either Christian bookstores or we have a local homeschool consignment store. And so a lot of these I got cheaper even than that. So I just bought the ones that I was missing from the sets from milestonebooks.com. Um, but you could buy the whole set there if you wanted to. So Going on Eagerly is the very first kindergarten book. There's a lot of paper puzzles in here, which I liked. Uh, patterns. A lot of gluing and things like that. And then um, things like this were favorites for us. Cutting out the puzzle pieces, making a puzzle. There are a lot of mazes in these. Um, we actually skipped this one because this was a little bit redundant from what we had just learned in this and we're going to be learning in the next one. But, you know, it's just going to depend on where your kid's at. But I will definitely say this for Lydia. This one was very math heavy, so we used this primarily as our math book for a long time before I started adding in some more of the Charlotte Mason Method 
um, math things and hands-on math and stuff, but this was um, one of the best ones that we did. And he loved it. And there's always these cute little crafts in here that you don't need many supplies for. So it shows the squirrel eating the nut, which is so cute. And then he was gonna count, um, you know, the different amounts of the walnuts there. And then um, there's a lot of like, you know, which one is first, which one is last. There's also, um, let me show you in the current one that he's in. This is another thing that I really love about these books that you don't see everywhere. So there's a little bit of geography as to where all these animals live. You know, here are the areas that these animals live in. This has a lot of numbers, a lot of mazes. I think I mentioned that already. Um, more cutting out of the puzzles and things. Um, when you get to, of course I'm not gonna be able to find it while I'm trying to show you, but when we start getting into like the letters and things, we had a lot of fun activities to do with, good grief guys, I'm sorry, bear with me, with matching words and tying it into the animal theme. And then at the bottom, there's always something to read about the particular animal that you're looking at. So that was like a little bit of, you know, before we do this, let's read a little something about camels. And then we would talk about that. And that he loves animals. So he was really interested in hearing more about the animals. So down here, jackrabbits have very large ears. There's always something, a little scientific fact about prairie dog towns. All of that was super fascinating to him. And so this tied in some mazes, some letters, a little bit of science some handwriting, and then um, we're not finished with this yet, we're still working through this, but we're about, here was um, sequencing, sequencing the Good Samaritan. These were letter trails where he had to take the road runner from, you know, point A, all, follow all the A's down to his food. So he learned a little bit about what a road runner eats, and all of these are themed like that. So whatever's on the front, these were from the Africa African savanna. These are under the sea. These are woodland creatures. These are Rocky Mountain creatures. And the helping one was rainforest. So they're all themed and they all fit within that theme. And for some reason that really held his attention too. He liked learning about these animals, you know, all from the same area. Like here's who all lives in the African savanna. He has talked about the African savanna now endlessly. It is hilarious how much he talks about that because of this book. So he's in this one right now. We do this one kind of for letters, handwriting, tracing numbers, small words, and then this one is a lot more math related. So we do a little bit from this book, a little bit from this book every day on top of whatever else we're, we've got planned for the day. Another thing I liked are these little different, it's just different modes of learning, I guess is the word. But you fold these puzzles and depending on how you fold them, like this way, if I folded this the right way, there would be a penguin puzzle. And then you would flip it over and fold it another way. And it might be a musk ox or whatever you're learning about. A polar bear, ptarmigan, whatever animal you happen to, be, happen to be learning about. So anyway, I just wanted to share these because I don't hear a ton of people talking about them. And I don't know why because I think they are amazing. I've never seen anything quite like these. And they're not, maybe they're not trendy. <laughs> um, I think they're classics though, because I hear a lot of people that have been homeschooling for a very long time with lots of different kids um, have always kind of gone back to these and we only have two kids, but I will definitely be going back to these with Lydia because if she likes, tends to like them like Finn does, so far she has. She's back in this one right now. And then she'll do counting with numbers again, um, just because I'm going in order again. But um, I just wanted to share these because I just thought, man, they're so inexpensive. They're so good. And I've enjoyed doing them. I feel like I've learned little facts about these animals. I feel like it's piqued an interest in Finn to want to learn more about the animals, especially this year as he's gone through these books. Um, but even when he was doing these, I've got a hundreds chart in there. Um, here's an example. Um, so we le learned Jesus loves the little children and then it had like a little fold out thing of children around the world. And I colored that before you think he's some kind of coloring genius. I colored that because he's just not a colorer. Um, but I wanted to give a little bit of color there. So I helped him there. So we learned about friends from around the world, different places people live, the different kind of dwellings they live in. Um, there was something else in this one I thought. You just don't see things like this. Um, a lot of different letter sounds. And like this is not fancy by any means. I think you can tell it by looking at it. Sometimes if it said, you know, draw the crown correct amount of X's. He wanted to do, do a dot markers. 
and I just let him because what does it matter? He's still counting the amount. He's just doing it with Dua Dots. So these were also flexible and I could kind of use them however I wanted to, but most of the time I just followed the directions because that was the easiest. And this has a repeat of it of what's in counting with numbers. So there is some review in some of these. I don't think you would necessarily need all of these but I didn't know starting out. So if I was gonna go back and redo it, which I kind of am now with Lydia, um, all I've purchased for her so far is Adventure with Books, which is the first preschool book and Counting with Numbers. And once she gets through those, I will reassess and see, you know, does she need more than this? Is she ready to go into the kindergarten books or what? I'll just decide at that point. And then with these, we've used all of them except for the second one in the series and really just because it was too much of a repeat of what we had just done. So not to say that, you know, your child might need extra review or they might want to move on to something else. But I did just want to share these because I think they're such a great resource. They're so inexpensive and they were so meaningful and helpful to our homeschool last year and this year. And our kids have loved them. So just wanted to share all that. I will do a separate video on B is for Breakdancing Bear. My final thoughts about that and my final thoughts about the Good and the Beautiful Pre-K because we have used both of those this year. We like them, we just didn't like them as well as this. <laughs> so I hope this was helpful to kind of see what was different about this versus other curriculums. I know sometimes everything either looks the same or some things look so flashy and so shiny and so pretty that you just think, I have to have those and then there's some exorbitant price and you don't really have to spend a lot to get a really good curriculum for preschool and kindergarten. So I really hope this video has been helpful and I will see you guys in my next video.